The Wellness Show, episode number 350. Welcome to The Wellness Show, a podcast on health and wealth. I'm your host, Tyson Bannigan, the founder of the Extraordinary Healing Arts Academy. Join me as we get the latest insight, tips, and strategies from wellness providers, coaches, and successful heart-centered entrepreneurs, and much, much more. So we're live on Facebook. This is Tyson Bannigan. This is the Wellness Show on Health, Wealth, and Enlightenment. And we're starting a new week here. This is January, February, March, April 27th, nearly at the end of the month. So uh, welcome to the show. Uh, We're with you every single morning at the same time, Monday to Friday. So starting a brand new week here, brand new input. So welcome to the show. And how are you, Laura? I'm wonderful. Get outside into the beautiful um, forest this weekend. How about you? Yeah, I was sitting on the beach watching the waves come in. It was a bit cloudy and chilly and the wind came up and sort of blew us off the beach, but nobody was there. And uh, yeah, we did it for a little drive. And um, yeah, it was uh, it was great. And then I slept the rest of the afternoon. Somebody pushed the stop button and uh, that's it. <laughs> Done. Finished. And every everyone was like really low key. Although um, I did have a lot of people um, say that they were angry or um, just grumpy this weekend. So we did a meditation on Sunday, and um, everyone agreed that yes, that it did definitely help. <laughs> Good. Well, in our meditation on Sunday, I can't remember the name of it, but there's a name. That yesterday was the day to start new projects. So we focused on starting new projects in our meditations. And that was really powerful. So, yeah, so I've only got six new projects. So, you know, that's uh, keep me busy. How many? Just six. What are you doing? What do you start? Tell me. What, well, what? I hired a coach to get my uh, dowsing and energy healing uh, book done. Oh, okay. So I'm excited by that. And we're going to be uh, going for an Amazon bestseller. So we're going to be pre-selling the book uh, soon. Uh, we need 100 or more people who are willing to buy it uh, before we launch it, even before it's written. So uh, I mean, it's three quarters written. So I'm excited. Wow. About that. So that, yeah, so this will go out as a companion for all of the work that we're doing here. It's, you know, it's a how-to manual. So I've hired a coach to do that. I'm very excited about that. Uh, I've been talking to Michael, my video guy, and getting ready to choose five or six top videos from the wellness show when I was interviewing uh, wellness pra- practitioners and you know health providers. Sure. I have some favorite ones there, and I want to do start the show on TV. So um, and then and then it looks like we have an interview coming up with the author of Chicken Soup on the wellness show so that's pretty exciting too that's like yeah. really exciting yeah Yeah. so that's happening so the book is one big thing um getting the garden going and doing that so we did some more work we planted the potatoes so that's done propped up the roses and we've discovered that the back wall is falling into our neighbors so we're gonna have to hire somebody to come in and do some serious work with oh, there oh yeah retaining wall huh yeah, so that's the big project. Uh, and then when I was doing my uh, weights out on the deck, the broke brat uh, broke and just about smacked me on the side a bit but, and bent my glasses. But anyway, that was like 60, 70 pounds coming smashing down. So the rope broke. So we have to redesign that. But anyway, so that was a bit frustrating. Right. Uh, what else did I do in, 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 to come up in the project? So I'm glad you're okay, though. Yeah, me too. I mean, I didn't want to, I, you know, I already have a flat head, but it would have been flatter, right? But, uh, <laughs> no flat heads, please. That would have been a little more squished. Uh, yeah, I can't remember what else. We went into the hospital last night, so that was another exciting thing. So we'll see whether they diagnose him with COVID-19. And my understanding is anybody that goes into the hospital immediately gets tested and Mm. designated and if that's the case then we get 14 days of lockdown so we'll see what happens there uh, we'll see what the establishment has to say about that i uh, just uh, posted in the dowsing and energy healing a really good rant video uh, a rant in the positive sense i uh, see if i can remember her name maybe i should just share it 
this. I'm not going to do like it. Like shares. Hmm? We like shares. Yeah, I'm just going to go see if I can find it quickly because I want to give her credit for the courage that she has in <laughs> saying what she's saying. And um, yeah. And oh, did you know we have a puppy named after us too? Uh, it's the latest and greatest. Okay, I'm going to share the screen here. Like a real puppy or just yeah, a real puppy. puppy. So we're bringing up to date over here. So this is on uh, the Dowsing and Energy Healing Closed Facebook. Her name is Dina Churchill. She has 202,742 views. She's saying everything I'd like to say, but haven't got all the words and all the research and background to say what she wants, what she is saying. Very courageous, uh, anti-vaccine, very clear about what she wants. She's at the rage stage and she wants everybody to wake up. So, you okay. know, whether you agree or don't agree, I'd love for you to help, hold, you know, go over, take a look at this, listen to it. It's a long one and see, and put it in the comments how you feel about it. Like, is this something that resonates with you? And if so, what do we do about it? Sure. Okay, so it's well worth uh, listening to. Thank okay. you, Dina, for being a, a courageous mom, for having an awesome son that's helping you do the research for having the courage to speak your voice. And here's the little doggy. So it says here, Aww. I That's want to share great. a little happy in honor of the dedication, inspiration you have brought to me and others. And for the amazing help you've given me, I want to introduce you to, to Laura, to my, uh, you and Laura, to my newest addition in my rescue group of critters. This is Tyla, named after Tyson and Laura who have come into my life assisting me with some of life's challenges. I am almost feeling 100% again and could not have gotten there without you. I feel so blessed to have gotten to know both of you and cannot thank you enough for all you do. I will always be uh, take, uh, talk, I'll also be taking in Tyla's grandma in two months as the breeder is done with her. Many blessings to both of you. So here's a little puppy. What a sweetie, eh? Wow. So thank oh, you. I've I never had it. anything named after me before. So Debbie, thank you for uh, encouraging yeah. us, encouraging others that Aww. if they do the work, they'll get the results. So to me, it, it, it's really, uh, really a blessing. Here's Shelly Darling. Uh, we'll be uh, doing, uh, hosting a show, co-hosting a show uh, on tomorrow uh, that I hopefully you'll come and watch. And uh, Shelly and I have been working together for four or five years. Uh, mm -hmm. Mostly in the area of geomancy, doing a First Nation ceremony uh, in the landscape. And uh, Shelly, myself, and Charlie Riverman have sort of been a, a pair. We met in person last summer at the American Dowsing uh, Convention in New Hampshire and did some traveling and, and uh, light working together, uh, clearing some trauma around First Nations and the settling of, a, of America. Uh, lots of energy locked in that needed to be released. So come and join us. It's a really nice uh, opportunity to um, just be in the energy of um, what it is to be one with Mother Earth. So it's called the Radical Earth Resonance co-hosted show. Just drop in uh, and, uh, and join us tomorrow. And it's at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And the links are, are go to the hole. So just uh, type in go to the hole, go over and find the links to join us. Mm -hmm. just, if nothing else, just come and uh, the energy is so, so beautiful. All right. So lots going on over here. I hear my I want to mm -hmm. share something with you guys today. All right. If you can get us out of this. I'm going to go. Yeah, sure. I'm going to share. I just want to read to you what a little what a little boy wrote. Um, this weekend. Well, her, her, his mother wrote it, but he said it. And I got goosebumps. And whenever I get goosebumps, I know that it's, um, that it's truth, right? So Mac is the little boy. He's probably about like three or four. And he told, it's be, uh, a conversation between Mac and his mother. It says, Mac, well, I just talked to God. And the mom says, oh, that's not nice, Mac. What did he say? Mac says, I can't, I, I, I said, I can help you with that, Mac, but I can't tell you what I asked him, but it has to do with getting rid of, of coronavirus. 
Five minutes later, Max says to his mom, okay, mom, I'm back. I just went to ask God some more questions. And then I gave him two hugs. She said, I bet that was nice. And he said, they were the best hugs you could have ever imagined. They felt so good. They felt like freedom. <laughs> I had to share that. It was so beautiful. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's wonderful. And, you know, there was uh, on my my page, uh, my um, Facebook page, there is a really interesting comment by somebody who's saying, you know, all this alternative health is all very well and good, but people are suffering and dying. I'm taking care of somebody with a advanced COVID-19 and you, we need to be listening to doctors. And um, anyway, sh I, I just want to put a shout out that, you know, I understand that this is not easy for a lot of people. There's a lot of suffering going yeah. on on all sorts of levels. And so mm -hmm. I want to honor you. It's not that I'm anti-science or anti-anything. If anything, I'm pro-life in the real meaning of pro-life, not the pro-life movement which is mm -hmm. another construct. I'm pro-life according to the law of one, which is do no harm. So that's what I'm interested in promoting is helping everybody to wake up and you can make your own decisions about what's truth, true for you, not from your intellect, not from your rational brain, not from your ego, but from guidance, from source consciousness. And that's where you need to be guided. And some will be guided one way and some will be guided another way. And all I ask of you is not to accept what I have to say, but to tune in to what is true for you. And in this time mm -hmm. of being tested, that's what you need to learn how to follow. Anything else will take you off track for you. That's mm -hmm. your inner spiritual GPS. Please find it, use it, and declare it and abide by it. That will keep you safe and sound in these very trying times. So that's the main message. Do not swallow the pill that Laura and Tyson says is the truth. Question it, see if it resonates with you. Do you get shivers up and down your spine? Did you, do you go, aha, that sounds right? Because if it does, most likely it's correct for you. But if it doesn't, then please go find the tribe that resonates with you, okay? Exactly. Yeah, this is the shepherd, uh, the, what did they say? The, this is the, uh, where we separate the wheat from the chaff or the wolves from the sheep, right? This is the time yeah. biblically that's been said that this would come, right? So yeah. it doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on, just know that you need to be following your own guidance, right? Right, exactly. We really want to make that clear, right? Yeah. No matter no matter what, everybody has has the right to their own thoughts and feelings on everything. I just please ask you that that you don't um, belittle or judge others for whatever it is that they believe in. Absolutely, absolutely. Some are going through the most horrendous experiences they could ever have at this time, and that's what they're supposed to be going through, either as a process of waking up or leaving planet Earth or. Uh, helping their loved ones transition. I mean, this is a very difficult time for everybody. Everybody deserves our compassion. And at every level, nobody gets lost, right? No, everybody uh, will achieve a full body enlightenment. And those that are part of the cabal or them guys or the 13 families or the baddies, you know, they all have their own agenda. They all will wake up at some time and smell the coffee and they will all decide whether they want to return to the light or not. So everybody's on their own soul path. Some of them are doing what they're doing because they put up their hand and said, I'll incarnate at that time to wake up humanity. So from our point of view, we want to judge them as being bad, rotten, and wrong. And, and when actual fact, who knows, on the higher level, they may be providing a, a spiritual service for us to wake us up out of our sheeple sleep, right? Yeah. Sleeping sheep. So it's hard for us to- don't like that, that sheeple stuff though. <laughs> Some people don't like that. I've seen it like, don't call us, you know, don't call people sheeple that's so mean. And I'm like, well, but it's kind of true. It's like my friend, um, Blake, he wrote this. He said, okay, I, I want to get everybody's mind off the coronavirus. And he said, there's this um, thing that the Indians used to do where they would, they would see a bunch of bison or about bison right uh near a near a cliff so they would all like surround them and then they run after them and the 
and the um, bison, instead of coming at them, because I mean, come on, they're bison, they could, they could totally run over all these Indians. They went off the cliff and then there was, you know, dinner and the, and the, and the um, Indians didn't have to do very much. And he said there, now I hope that, that that will get your mind off the coronavirus. And I was like, oh my God, he's, I love him because this is the kind of stuff he did. Today he did this. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to um, enhance my immune system. I'm, go, I'm not going to plant a garden because I might have to go and, and get all the supplies, which would then put my immune system in jeopardy. I'm going to wipe everything down with um, bleach because that, you know, of course would help. And then Towards the end, you know, like he goes through all this stuff that he's going to do to like help, you know, increase his immune system. And then he says, but basically what all of this stuff does is make the virus stronger. All of this, because the, the farther away you run from it or the longer it stays dormant or something, the stronger it gets, which is so true because I believe that that's why all of these viruses are getting stronger because we keep we keep, we keep like creating things that are that are going to kill off these things when in actuality it's 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 supposed to increase our immune system so when will science do but when i was a kid and i'm a lot older than than laura but she's younger and more beautiful but i'll have to give, give her credit for that but when i was young you know when a kid had a measles your mom might tell you to go down the block and get the measles and get it over with. Yes. I mean, it wasn't we, something that yeah. was the end of the world we or scary. Have, I mean, we used to like, have um, parties. Yeah, we used parties. to have measles parties. Let's get this yes, over and done chicken with. chicken parties. Yes, get all the kids together. Yes. Let's get How this done. You're watching, you know what I'm talking about because we, we talked about this when your girls had chicken pox. Let's get all the kids in the neighborhood here so that they can all get chicken pox. Yes. That's how it like increases their our immune system. system. Not the other way around, peeps. So where did this crazy idea that you know somehow humanity is more advanced than human mother nature, right? And that somehow mm -hmm. mother nature doesn't know how to improve our immune systems, and therefore we have to run around and put all these pollutants into a needle and then inject it into somebody's body, and they're going to be more healthy. I mean, come on, people. This and then when you did not, you know, when you say, come on, guys, think about this, they're like, no, no, you think about this. This is science. This is, well, okay. I mean, I get that science is helpful, but science has also harmed us in many, 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 many different ways as well. But well, let's not talk about that. <laughs> well, the, the point is, how is the science being used, right? I mean, I mean, science is like statistics, you know, depends on who's using it for what reason, right? Monsanto would say that all of these herbicides and pesticides are not, you know, are not negative to human health. Hell, we'll even drink them, and they'll drink them in front of you and do all sorts of crazy things. The you know, the same, the same uh, advertising company uh, for Monsanto was the same for the cigarette industry. Oh yeah, there's nothing wrong with our cigarettes. They're, they're not going to cause cancer. I mean, well, right? Mind, we've been snowed so many times. Like you've got to wake up yourself and make your own decisions you can't rely on your government or on the establishment or whoever or the multinational corporations mm -hmm. i mean i was just reading uh coming through that walmart and I, this was a fairly old message you are all walmart was shutting down i think it was 365 stores worldwide because they cannot compete with amazon look if Walmart's shutting them down because they can't compete with Amazon, this is the way we're going. We're going from multinational uni companies to handle everything, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's getting uh, so that we want to narrow down the competition so there's only huge companies that are controlling the food industry, controlling the, the delivery system, and we want to get everybody else mm -hmm. out of the way. And by the way, humans are not that necessary anymore because we can do it all by machine. So, you know, we can program machines. So we don't need monkeys, uh, monkey humans running around on production lines anymore. They're sort of obsolete. Well, in the, I don't know, did you ever see the movie Zeitgeist? Zeitgeist, Zeitgeist, Zeitgeist I think is what it's called. Yeah. And part of it was saying that at some point that we'd have these like utopian kind of um, systems, right? Where everything would be taken care of and then we could we could be creative and and free you know and everything would be taken care of us 
for us. And so maybe that is, I mean, maybe that's part of, part of it. I don't, I mean, you know, it is what it is. I don't, I, I obviously don't have the answers, but. Well, um, there's so many books are written about this. Um, I can't even remember the name of it. Fountainhead, there you are, by Anne Rand. There it is. Read Fountainhead by Anne Rand, where we have this big, huge bubble of, over the city of all the intellectuals and all the scientists and all the who's who and all the brilliant, because they're the ones we need to save. All the rest are, you know, expendable. So if you're not smart enough to be part of that inner group, then you, you know, you don't deserve to live. This is the same attitude that's going on this planet now. If you're not part of the in crowd, right, the cabal or the 13 families or those that have the power, then you shouldn't be allowed to be on this planet. Well, that's part of the issue too, is that that who's in, who's worthy and who's not. Yeah, exactly. You know, if I my worthiness is that I I want to make as much money as I possibly can, and I see you as competition, right? And I have to take care of you. You know, after I can't, you know, if, you know, for one of the problems I understand, and I may be wrong, is that there's not as much prescription drugs being sold anymore. I mean that efficacy of the prescription drugs aren't working they're they're backfiring there's too many ill effects that are coming from the drugs therefore people aren't buying them or they're not being allowed to be produced and therefore the pharmacy pharmaceutical companies are not making the money that they need so think about it if you're a pharmaceutical company you need to have something like a vaccine right you need to have something where everybody in the planet needs it right Think of how much money billions and trillions of dollars will be made from that. Think how much million, billion dollars are being made out of COVID, right? I mean, we're stopping production and we're doing this and we're doing that. I mean, this is a billion trillion dollar thing. And, and if we can crash the stock market, which is done all, on a regular basis, we just go in and- What do you mean it's not to protect us? We just go in and buy all the stocks at the low, low level when they crash. Right. And then we bring it back up and then we sell them again and make a huge profit. Mm -hmm. And kick poor people or people that are almost almost at the edge out of their homes and what they've worked their whole lives for. Yeah, I always, you know, the women's lib movement, you know, how many people think the women's lib was really, really something amazing? What about you, Laura? Was the women's lib a really amazing thing? I don't, I don't think that, that most people want to hear my my um, thoughts and feelings on on that because <laughs> I don't agree. I don't agree with. Do you it. realize that one's liberation movement was created by the Rockefeller Foundation? Well, it doesn't surprise me because they, it really, they really messed up like your generation um, of men and women who the men seem very docile and the women are like almost over overly dominant over the men and. I don't, I don't understand, like, I think that there's a nice, if, if everything's in balance, it's, it's beautiful. If it's out well, of you balance. You know why they did that? Because 50% no. of the population couldn't be taxed. So if we can get women to get into the workforce, we could tax them. Right. Okay, and then furthermore, they won't have time to take care of their kids. So we can destroy the, the family. Put them all I mean, and it's school. worked. So, it's worked so well. But ask a feminist, you know. But I had a wonderful father and mother, both a very, um, a very good partnership. And my mother was had that female energy and was very nurturing and kind and loving. And and my father was dominant and strong and and took care of things. And yet he respected my mother so very much. And, and my mother respected my father very much. And together they were an amazing team. And that's what, that's what I saw. And so when I see, I saw it with uh, this 16 year old man that I dated for a while and all of his friends, all the women there, that's where I first saw it. I was like, they just were like this over their men. And I was, and, and I asked him about that and he's like, yeah and he was kind you know he was he had had a really strong wife too and it was so out of balance ty and i was yeah, like so let me just finish the equation so the equation is that we put them into school and into daycare so we can indoctrinate them that was the agenda mm -hmm. so yeah scary business so so uh, so black lives mm -hmm. matter is another one 
and I won't go into that. Doesn't it, oh. And doesn't it seem more like more and more of the younger people um, are now staying home with their kids? And and absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, and she points this out in that in the video that I'm asking to watch is that the younger generation isn't running around with masks on and being crazy about this. They know that there's something afoot. So it's like our generation uh, and your generation are the ones that are freaking out over this whole mm -hmm. COVID super, thing. Super mind control. Yeah. Yeah. As right. your phone on, because I think we should probably be getting calls by now. Oh, I probably isn't. Right. <laughs> I probably isn't. I shut it off. No, I think it's on. It's on now. But oh. the ringer's down. Oh. You know what happens when you take the weekend off, right? Well, yeah. You don't want to listen to nobody. <laughs> well, call in people. It's 866-369-7464. Ask your questions so Ty and I can um, get some answers and do what we do and love which is answer questions. <laughs> All right, so now I'm trying to figure out whether we got the sound on or off. Did anyone else out, out there this weekend um, have um, kind of a grumpy weekend in the beginning of it? Michelle Montgomery said, I agree about your mom and dad and the roles and respect these days. I feel the role, I feel roles are reversed. Yes, very much so. And you can tell it in women's dress too, I believe that women dress more um, masculine than feminine. And um, then we ask our men to stand up and be strong and, and yet we try and dominate over them, so. All right, so I finally figured my phone off. Uh, we finally got it off silent mode. We got the sound turned off. Two good things, so phone in one eight six six three six nine seven four six four. Well, you know, my mom and dad were the opposite. My mom was uh, worked in the advertising industry and was very, very good as a sketch artist. And mm -hmm. she really resented the fact that my dad got her pregnant and that she couldn't be in doing that anymore. She but I said, think she was there too. So I don't know what she was resenting. I know, but you know, it was all his fault. So, um, <laughs> so and she was really resentful all of her life about that. And then when, when they did separate, she went and go back into the advertising business. Of course, it had all changed so drastically. So even then, that was in, I was born in 45. So I was a war baby right off the war. So even then, there was this whole movement of coming out of the war effort because um, in the war, women went to work in order to build up bombs and the arms and everything. You know, that's where it started where women were really became out of the households more and more and into the right yeah. right rosie rivet yeah rosie rivet yeah and even the queen of england you know doing car repairs you know we have we have some um more more comments here i agree that women have adopted the out of balance male par paradigm of power and competition that's from linda i agree um Michelle Montgomery said, I want the relationship like your parents have. Well, yeah. Well, put it out there. Yeah. And then Lewis R. Peterson says, men are meant to be providers always agreed. Um, Michelle Montgomery, does my brindle boxer pretty? Is she pregnant? Hello, Lewis. How are you? I'll ask. Hi, Tyson. I'm hanging in there working and trying to cope with everything. Know. Quick question. I mean, love the topic about, you know, the relationships and reversal of the roles. There was a uh, heel, I believe, Marianne Williamson, who was, or I forgot, it might be her, it might be somebody else that wrote, a, I started writing a book and it was supposed to be about, you know, why men are the way they are and, and, and so on. And then in the middle of the writing of the book, she said, but wait a minute, men are not the problem. Women are the problem because the man is the king and is the provider by nature. And now we are challenging the men and we want to be provided as well. And there's only, there's only one king in the kingdom. So you cannot have two kings. And she changed the title of the book. 
needs to reflect exactly that, that women, the minute they put on the pants and go out and work and on and on, that becomes the problem. Like you stated, you know, they have to be educated so they can be taxed and there's more money generated for the system. So that was my point on that. On the other question regarding my grandson, he keeps asking, when is this coronavirus? He's seven years old. When is it going to go away? Good question. And yesterday, he passed the school and it was bloody. He had something with the stomach. I want you to scan, maybe see what's going on. Maybe it's, he's doing okay today, but my wife saw that he was a little bit bloated. He had past issues with a with a thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. So he's a little overweight. He loves candy, like chocolate, like crazy, and chips, and so on. He can't stop it, and, and, and now he's drinking soda, <laughs> which is not normal. Yeah, that's not good. So, that's going to really crash yeah, his yeah. immune system. So, um, yeah. Um, so what I did, did with my son with regard to that is uh, I took all those pops and candies and hamburgers and all the rest of it and put it into a graph, and then I taught him how to douse. And I said, okay, okay, so ask this question, you know, what does this soda pop do to my body on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being, you know, 10 being really, really good. And then, uh, and then, uh, then he knew. So I, we put all those figures on this graph, you know, with all the pictures on it of the hamburgers and all this stuff. And, and then said, well, when you, when you don't feel good, so what happens? Well, I have a stomach ache or I have this. So then, so now we had stomach ache underneath and then we had all the foods up above on this graph. Then he could decide, you know, if this is a minus 10 and this is a minus eight and he puts them together, well, that's gonna be really detrimental. He's gonna end up with a gut. So then his mom didn't have to run around and try and convince him to do this or do that. It was his decision. You want a gut ache, then go ahead. But it that's was- That's a great idea. It was connecting him to his body, right? Yes. And it gives them the power to decide. Yeah, he has the power to decide. Right. You want pain? Go for it. If you want not to have pain? Fine. Right? Right. If you want to have diabetes, you know, the other thing to do is, you know, say that all these things really lower, uh, affect your blood pressure. And on a scale of zero to 10, this is your body. Teach them how to muscle test. Your body says that this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, how likely is this to lead to serious problems? Uh, and douse that out for them. Then you can decide. Mm -hmm. He could eat all the candy now, and then he can take, you know, shots for the rest of his life. What does he want to do? It's up to him. Because otherwise, you're trying to yeah. teach somebody to do something they're not ready to do, right? So, And it's not, it's uh, not yeah. to, have to say what's right or wrong for somebody either. Right. So, so to go back to what you were saying about men and, being, uh, men and women, I think there's another level to this converse, uh, conversation. That is... You know, actual fact, it is not the lion is always a king. It's not the, the, the male lion that does the hunting. It's the female lions that do it. And they do it as a pack. They don't do it as individuals. So the point is, we're going to get much further ahead if we stop doing this competitive, who's the top dog here, whether it be male or female. This whole thing about somebody has to win in order to, somebody has to succeed. There has to be winners and losers. This whole right. thing about scarcity on this planet that we're in competition is what's locking us down to an erroneous belief system. There's enough for all of us, every single human being on this planet, but we have to learn how to share. We have to learn how to work together. And that's a different level of cooperation that we haven't even started to uh, think about because we're too busy competing. Whether it's men against women or women against women. I want to ask something. I'm helping my grandson with the school work and the first day with the online, like full on classroom thing. My daughter is at work and she should have been home at least for the day, you know, and that's the thing because she's been forced to work. Her cousin has maybe three weeks at home with the virus supposedly. And now my daughter's been exposed and my my niece, she doesn't have any children, so she should be the one going out and about. But that's the thing. Another thing I wanted to point out on that topic is that the thing about us men, the minute we cannot provide, we 
we make room for the next one to come. That has been proven all along because of our macho mentality, you know. Uh, that's one thing that we do. We walk away, and the ones that don't, they're the ones that become abusers because they don't want to give up, you know, and they don't want to admit that they are not good providers. Yeah, well, thank so, you, Louis, for bringing that up. I, you opened another topic. I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to talk about what you just okay. said. So thank you for bringing that up. That's right. really important. So thanks for entering this. Yes, so, uh, yes, so child abuse, uh, um and I mean serious child abuse and serious spousal abuse has increased by over 30% since COVID-19. This is really serious business. Uh, in the Academy, we've launched and have launched uh, a number of years ago, the Social Justice Reform Committee. We are reactivating that committee. This nice. is a committee because um, Many women who are in an abusive relationships are with a person who, and I, Laura, I can't remember the name again, a, a person who has absolutely no feelings whatsoever. What's the name of that? Like disconnected? Yeah, they're disconnected, but what's the name for somebody who has no, no, no feelings whatsoever in a relationship? Anyway, the point, the point is that they're very, very brilliant and they're very, very smart. And when they go to court, they always win the day. And therefore the woman- Oh, loses, sociopaths. Sociopath. Loses the ability to have uh, uh, you know, visiting rights and can even lose the children. So uh, we have created this committee to do the inner work, the energy healing around this. So we have to be careful about this because we have to have great privacy for the women so that they're protected. Mm -hmm and taken care of. So if you know of anybody out there that's going through spousal abuse or the, any of the children that are having uh, a ch a child abuse, then we'd mm -hmm. like you to submit their names. Now, I know our job is to keep the names private. And so if it's, I, I don't know about you, Laura, but for me, I don't need a name. I just need to know that that person has identified that in some way so if you had three people and you said A, B, and C and sent me A, B, and C, that's all I need to know because I'll just tune into your consciousness and that will give me A, B, and C. So I personally, uh, as part of this committee, don't need to know the name. I just need to know the person and know that you've made the connection in your brain between that person and, and the coding that you're using that you're sending to me. This is really important so that none of this can ever be tracked, okay? And we will do the work as a committee. So we're reconvening that committee. I think uh, when we did start it in the beginning, there was like uh, 14 or 15 people in that committee. We'll do it as a group action. We'll do court of atonement and other ways of working energetically so that we can create a safe environment because for many women, they're trapped. Uh, how do they get out of this situation? And children. Was and, children. Hmm? And, children. and children. So if you know of anybody uh, that you'd like to put their name for, please, if you want to be on that committee uh, then you, and, you want to, and you're willing to abide by the confidentiality, then please get hold of Laura and let her know that you'd like to be on that committee. It's going to be chaired by Darlene because Darlene and Michael are working on a relationships, abusal relationships, and helping those that are coming out of abusive relationship uh, learn to love themselves and get past the trauma in that relationship. So they're ready to be fully present and ready for a loving relationship. So I've asked her to be in charge of this committee. So uh, we're reactivating. That's the Social Justice Reform Committee. Okay. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you. And anytime anyone knows of anyone that's being abused or harmed in any way, not only get a hold of us, but please um, call um, for help. Yeah. Um, Yes. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I don't we don't, don't even know it. My One of my good friends when we were younger was being um, physically abused and um, her coworker noticed it and said, have you talked to Laura about it? And she said, no. Um, and she was very private about it. But what I noticed was like, she wasn't, she wasn't taking care of herself. She, I would, I would go see her and her hair would be like she hadn't take, you know, bathed or anything for a couple of days. And I'd be like, what's going on? And just kind of like pulled inside of herself. And um, then 
I saw it. I saw him hit her and I pulled her out and she hasn't been in anything since, but it's um, like, now I know the signs, but back then I was younger and, and no one wants to think that somebody that you like, or you, you know, you look, you spend time with is harming your friend, you know, and you don't, you don't want to like go there. Our, our brains are trained to like, right. And not the victim, accuser, that. abuser, a rescuer, um, denial, all that is a repetitive cycle. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you, your husband or anybody it could be male to female or female to male, if this is a happening and you have this running in your head while well, he's apologized and you said he won't do it again and you're at the third time that this has happened, you need to get hold of us. Right. Right. So and I say it again. Power back. He says, or he says, I'll never do it again. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. Please trust me. And you've and this has happened three times in a row. Mm -hmm. You need to get hold of us. Okay. That's how critically important it is. And it's nothing against the abuser. They're stuck in a cycle uh, from their own uh, lack of parenting skills, from their own lineage, from their own parents. And so we have a lot of compassion for both sides of the fence here and we'll work on both sides of the fence. This has got nothing to do with judgment. This is helping people get over their trauma and through their trauma so they can show up as a sovereign human being on both sides of the fence. So this is not anti whatever, right? This is not anti-psychopath this is actually helping the psychopath get their life back in order right i think it was a narcissist michael yeah hold in narcissist too i mean sociopaths can do the same thing yeah anyone could do it yeah. these are just terms that are coming up into our into our um ether again they're running right. so thank you for the clarification yeah anybody who is abusive and can't get out of that cycle because they were abused right right yeah. And it, don't forget, this can happen at the personal level. It can happen at the family level. It can happen in their past life, future life. I mean, in other words, a repetitive cycle. And it happens at the nation state. Those that were abused will become abusers, right? As At a nation level. Just look at your history lessons, right? Or if you were abused as a child, you generally pull that back, that same vibration back up into you. And Even if you don't want to, when push comes to shove and you're in a traumatic situation, the first thing you'll be wanting to do is run the pattern that you learned from your parents. Right. Even if you say, no, 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 I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. The contingency will be to run that pattern. And particularly if there's guns and weapons and knives involved, that gets really, really, really dangerous. So we want to put that out there. Uh, let's get this dealt with, right? You know. Mm -hmm. Let, the one thing about COVID nineteen COVID -19. is all of the things that weren't working are getting really, really exposed, but and even all the lies in our society are coming to the foreground. One, how we treat senior citizens is not working. Everybody, we knew that, but everybody's understanding that. You know, mm -hmm. the fact that both parents have to go make a livelihood, that there's nobody to take care of the worst, that doesn't work. We're getting used, we're getting aware of that. You know, and on and on and on. You know that. Um, it isn't safe to have women in a house where there is some abuse going on uh, yeah. and on and on and on. So and you're, they're so they're worth so much more and, and they'll systematically like knock them down into not feeling at all worthy. And it can right. be in same same sex. I see it a lot in female and female relationships where there's um, one is very dominant and and the other one is a caretaker. I've seen it over and over and over. And a lot of times the caretaker is the one that's working. They're, she's the one that's um, making a lot of money and the other one typically isn't working and um, very, very needy and, and very abusive. So, so this is really the behind the scenes look at all this power versus force. Is this... Uh, force over somebody or power and if you have having force somebody over it then you're controlling them and that's what we're talking about hi tony welcome to the wellness show hello hello there you are hi, this, this is tony good morning how are you i am fine welcome to the show
What's up in your life? Dyson, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you now. Um, Dyson, I'm wondering if you could give me some clearing today. Sure. What do you want to clear? Well, um, the PD has not been kind to me for the last two weeks. The tremors are really bad, and uh, I think maybe the clearing could help a little bit. All right. So what, so what do you want to specifically clear? For the tremors, for the PD. Tremors. For, oh, the tremors. Okay, let's just do that. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to do this for all diseases and disorders um, and even COVID-19. So here we go. So I, Tyson Bandigan, in my I am present, sister, divine mother, divine father, and the source of all that is, I ask for uh, the assistance of any light beings who'd like to join in this clearing to remove any and all trauma, result, unresolved conflict, core fractures, toxic emotions, uh, thought forms from any and all sources do not abide by the law of one which is do no harm and the most benevolent outcome for all concerned. We may have all cords, hooks, uh, thought forms projected on us from any and all sources known or unknown, government, alien technology or any other sources and we bring that to zero and we clear all the matriarchal, patriarchal, star family, soul family and family of origin of any intrusions in our energy field that lead to disorder, disease, or sickness. And we undertake this clearing throughout all time, space, and dimensions, both known or unknown. And we declare it so, so be it, it is done. Thank you. So, fair amount of action going on here. And um, for those that can see the pendulum, on. the pendulum is still doing its clearing motion. And for those that don't know what we're doing, we're spinning the pendulum counterclockwise. It's creating a vortex. It's according to the vortex mechanics. This is the basis of forces, um, a positive and negative um, energetically on the planet, and actually in the solar system, in the multiverse. Uh, vortex mechanics is um, involution and evolution. It's part of the toroidal field. So you can look it up. So this is not just woo woo, this is based on science. Okay. So what we're doing is we're uh, tapping into the uh, the field of energy and making a command. And when you say, I am, I, I am presence, you're saying, I am one with source, and I hereby command this to be so. And because you're in resonant frequency uh, with source consciousness, then you can actually change time, space, and energy. So uh, let me just tune into that. So before we did that, everybody on the call was like, uh, about negative 25 so let's just see where we are now actually let me just see was that so negative how was that negative 25 so where are we now so tony hopefully that uh will help you i don't know whether so let's go in and do another something for tony let's go yeah let's do it can we do can we do harold mccoy yeah that's what i said oh sorry that's all right don't be sorry we're just going to do it good all right we're just going to do a harold mccoy Okay, so you're wondering who that is. We're going to bring in Harold. Here's Harold. Hi, Harold. We can do some work with Harold. Okay, hang on there, Tony. We're in our on our way. Okay, thanks.
Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just standing, finishing up now. So I'm just going to close everything up. All right, Tony, thanks for coming and playing with us. That was awesome. And thank you, Harold, for um, providing us an opportunity to, to work with you. That was, I learned so much from that. I could write a book. So thank you very, very much. Can I just say one thing, though, that there's still some um, things that his soul needs to learn about it is what, is what Harold told me. And so it's, um, I don't, I don't, I can't explain it, but he kind of like, did you see it? Like, I don't know if you saw it, but I felt like you took him down and like splatted him out. Like no, I got it, I got it all cleared up. So why don't we ask yeah. Divine Mother if there's anything that he needs to to learn to complete this that he learned this uh, yeah. in the quickest possible way? Ask mm -hmm. Divine Mother to keep running these programs and with Harold's assistance until everything is whole, sound, and complete, and all the lessons are learned. How about that? Yes. Yep. Okay, and I declare it so. So be it as done. All right, Tony. Hopefully that will help uh, help you. And please get back to us. And if it doesn't, we want to be the first to know. All right. Bye for now. Thank you very much. Right. Hello. Welcome to the Wellness Show. Oh, good morning, Tyson and Laura. This is Linda calling. Um, just a couple things. Um, Laura, Laura made the comment that the younger generation is staying home with children to parent, and um, that's exactly what my son and daughter-in-law are doing. Um, they sacrifice, but they, they're very clear about that's their highest value. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about in terms of deep clearing um, is about vaccinations. And I remember talking to my um son and daughter-in-law before they had their baby she was pregnant about vaccinations and they kind of had the approach of you know go slow and not very many but um there's just an entire population and generation that has been affected by corrupted vaccinations and i wondered about putting that in the deep clearing protocol yeah absolutely put it in the, the deep clearing protocol clear any and all toxic additions to vaccinations and bring them to zero um, and any positive effects allow them to run. But yeah, you would be the one that cleaned all that up. Um, you know, the, the difficulty with all of this is whatever the toxics that are in the vaccine, it means the immune system has to be raised in order to deal with those because they're long-term effects. I, Please listen to the lady who po I posted during the dowsing and energy healing that I put at the beginning of the show. Boy, that lady has done her homework. I get shivers when I'm when I said her name because she's done her homework. She really has, and uh, she's saying, "Oh God, I'm even getting more shivers." And Me more too. Shivers. I know, right? <laughs> uh, God bless you for doing all that work. I'm still getting more shivers. Anyway, full blown Kundalini rush over talking mm -hmm. about her. I mean, she's so angry. Wow. She's all so angry, um, but I get that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, wake up, people. Anyway, she was saying those that have, take, have taken three vaccines are are uh, absolutely in critical problem. Anyway, I'm not going to try and say what she said. Um, she's done her homework. Take a look at it. And again, look, pro vaccine, anti vaccine. One, I want you to make your own decisions. Right? This show is not to be pro this or anti this. This is say, please wake up. Be one with source consciousness, we call it God, source consciousness, the infinite, the Tao, I don't care what you call it. I want you to learn how to be one with it and know when you're in the divine flow. I want you to get clear guidance. And if the guidance says yes, then follow it. And if you don't like the guidance, then question it until you get it right to you know that you're one with source, then you'll always be in the right place at the right time. And you'll have the information you need to make these decisions. This is not saying this is bad, rotten, and wrong, and this is good over here. Look, the light and the dark, the checkerboard, uh, the yin and the yang, this polarity zone we're in necessitates the positive and the negative. That's how we learn. And it's not that the, the you know, that the, 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 the dark squares are the bad cowboys with bad hats on and black hats on and the good cowboys have white hats on and they're the good guys. No, it's the interrelationship between the two that's going to wake us up 
and have us smell the coffee. And we need both of them uh, until we realize that we don't need to play this game anymore. That um, we create this world with this priority and we can decide, hey, I don't want to play this game anymore. I want to be on the other level and I want to be the witness of this, right? Without getting emotionally caught in the, the trauma. No, this lady's caught in the trauma and God bless her for doing that because we all need to wake up. And for that, I'm truly grateful. That's why I love her so hard, so much for doing that. But we have to be there for her too because she's going to get overwhelmed. She's going to burn, burn out because she's so compassionate about it. She's so angry, writing letters to lawyers and Indian chiefs and presidents and, you know, Trudeau and, and you know, and going to- Oh Canada. yeah, Trudeau, yeah. And he's doing a whole schmoo, which is really, you know, well, the, the establishment. Let me finish. The big foot of the status can come down, you know, on her. So we need to be able to help her be who she is without getting into trouble. Sorry, Laura. Go ahead. That's okay. I think I think it's. I don't know whether I don't know what her you know cause or what her issue is without listening. But um, I do think in order for I think awareness is probably and discernment is probably. And, you know, receiving guidance from source, of course, are, are three probably most powerful tools. Absolutely. Rather than, get, rather than getting into conflict, but rather just say, okay, um, I know since 1986 that the vaccinations have, have not been tested and they are corrupted. And what can I do about that? You know what I'm saying? Okay, I can clear them. I can remove the toxins, you know. So... Yeah. Yeah, and she doesn't but, know that part. She doesn't know that part, right? She doesn't. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly, and that's where we come in to you help. You teach her, Tice. <laughs> that's where we you come. Are a teacher. That's where we come in to help her. But thank her for making it so clear that we have a choice and we need to wake up. Like she says, just wake up. So we're waking up. Right. So thank you for phoning yeah. in. So do clear, clear, and. Um, you know, I had to take all sorts of crazy things because I traveled and worked uh, internationally in developing countries and they, you know, the medical doctor that would do this, right? He got so excited because we were our guinea, his guinea pigs, right? They would say things like, you cannot eat any vegetables when you're overseas in developing countries because they're all, they all have all these diseases and disorders in them. But he would love to test us when he come back. Like we would bring so much, you know, tropical diseases back for him to test in his lab. So we were his guinea pigs, right? Oh I had a doctor who probably in order to travel, you probably had to be. I vaccinated. had to take some of this crap, right? I yeah. Gotta tell you. yeah. I had to take yellow fever and dinghy and and I had to do malaria pills and all this other stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, well, it's also it's my understanding that the Native American population, what is it, the Navajos? have been really affected by the coronavirus because they don't have immunity to it, just as when, um, you know, Western Europeans came to this mm -hmm. country. Uh, was it, was, was it um, smallpox? Yeah, right. And they, they had no immunity to smallpox and the epidemic um, that wiped out, you know, whole Native American communities. So, right. yeah, so the, the immunity is all relative oftentimes to location and, and uh, you know, population and culture and so on and so forth. So, right. okay, well, thanks very much. Thanks yeah, just a comment on that. I had a friend who was um, used to run around barefoot all the time, and he used to have mix uh, dirt into his food be before he traveled to developing countries to improve his immune system. I'm not saying you need to do that, but that's how you handle it. You know, a little yeah. dirt goes well, a long way. Yeah, and smallpox was yeah, the microbiome. The part of our problem in this generation yeah we've just nuked so it we've nuked it i mean we're cleaning everything can't be in dirt. Yeah. yeah 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 we can't be in dirt kids can't play in dirt no 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 get that out of your mouth get that out of your mouth you're gonna die get that out of your mouth right no don't don't <laughs> let the dog kiss you no 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 don't touch that don't touch it oh my good god we've got such a you know germ phobia going on here but anyway god bless <laughs> okay, everybody well, thanks a lot. all right okay bye. take care bye-bye bye-bye Thanks for phoning in. We have room for a uh, well, one more we could squeeze in. We're at the top of the hour, one eight six six three six nine seven four six four. Or is there anybody out there with a burning question there, Laura? No, everyone's been listening. We've been having a lot of listeners today. Sure. Yeah, it's good. Now it's the top of the hour. It's eleven a.m. So, any last comments? 
we were all over the map today. Today was a good day. Today we did, we covered a lot. We covered a lot of controversial um, issues on vaccines and um, the coronavirus and women and their feminism. That's probably going to be <laughs> a hot topic um, for my feminists out there. And what else did we talk about? We did a nice clearing for Tony. Yeah, we did a little bit of clearing for people for all the disease and disorder uh, that's coming up. So. And, and we got named um, Tyla after we our- We have a puppy named after us, so yeah, everybody needs that was puppy. Sweet. Yeah, he's a cute little puppy, right? And we, and thank you for your encouraging words. Uh, it's really no, nice to know that by mm -hmm. you doing the deep clearing protocol that you're getting results. So let us know how you're doing. And, and if you're not getting results, we want to know too, because it's obvious that we need to help you in a different way. So there's, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, yeah. we'd like to know, okay? So until tomorrow morning, same time, same place, um, be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Until then, just take care of yourself. Go have some fun. All right, bye for now. Bye. For quality online wellness products, courses, and services, visit our sponsors, thewellnessstore.ca and the Extraordinary Healing Arts Academy located at thewellnessacademy.ca. To stay in touch, visit us at thewellnessshow.ca. And until next time, be healthy, wealthy, and wise.